I recently picked up a wireless Apple CarPlay dongle from AliExpress and wanted to see if I could get it to work with the Raspberry Pi 3. After some tinkering, I found a way of getting it to work with the Raspberry Pi Android image and the application supplied with the dongle. In this video, we'll go through the process of installing the Android image to the Raspberry Pi, downloading the application, the settings in the application, and the issues I found with the device, and what I did to fix them. At the end of this video, I'll give a summary of if it's even worth picking up one of these dongles. The Raspberry Pi has many distros that range from Raspberry Pi OS to NetBSD. Android has been ported many times to the Pi, but most of the versions ported have been completely unstable or even cost money. This version we are using today is the best one I could find after searching. This is Costa Kang Lineage OS 16.0, which is Android 9. This image is available for both the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, and you can check the description for the download links. Note these versions are still not 100% stable and if you're experiencing any crashes or issues it might be worth trying another version of Android for the Pi. Once you have downloaded the image for your Raspberry Pi, you'll need to grab a program to write the image to the SD card. To write the image, you'll need to open up the program, select the file you want to flash, insert the SD card into your computer, select the device and start the flash. Once the flashing is complete, you can move the SD card from your computer and insert into the Raspberry Pi. You are now ready to power up the device and go through the setup process for the operating system. After this, you should be able to go onto the home screen and proceed onto the next step. From my research, I have found there to be two different dongles used for Apple CarPlay. These two dongles run completely different apps. The dongle that I have is the first type which uses the AutoKit application and the other type uses a ZBox application. I have placed the download link for the AutoKit application in the description but I'm unable to find the copy of the ZBox application online. Installing each app is quite simple as all you need to do is direct your browser to the links above and the APK will start downloading. Once the download is complete, you will need to go into the settings and enable installing untrusted packages. Once that is done, you can open up the APK and proceed with installing the application. With the AutoKit application, there are many settings to configure. Some of these settings are vital for the app to function correctly and some are cosmetic. The setting you may need to play around with the most is the working mode setting. This setting changes the way the app communicates with the CarPlay dongle. The speed mode is the fastest mode but has issues with devices like the Raspberry Pi where it stutters due to the low CPU performance. Fluency mode works on some devices but through error screens for me. Compatible mode is the slowest mode but it works correctly on the Pi. Another thing you can do in this menu is you can change the logo of the exit button in CarPlay. There are a number of popular brands and other icons to choose from. Over the period of testing out the device I found a few problems that was caused by the, both the application and the operating system. These range from choppy music to no display at all. The most common problem I got was the overall choppiness of the application. This would either be choppy music, slowness in the user interface, device crashes, or even weird messages. The fix I found for this issue is to set the speed of the device to compatibility, which fixed all of the issues above except for the slowness in the user interface. I couldn't find any way of having the device run at a smooth speed and had to deal with the slowness. Another issue I had was with the Android image not working my HDMI to DVI converter. This was due to the video driver of the Android images not supporting some display devices. The way I solved this was by connecting the device to another display and enabling the Swift Shader software renderer by opening the terminal and entering the following command. Overall I got the CarPlay dongle working with the Raspberry Pi, but I found the experience not to be acceptable for use on a day to day basis. The Raspberry Pi Android image ran well, but the application for the dongle was not stable and even after the fixes was slow and caused the device to crash at times. I also tried this on other Android devices and had the exact same problem, so I would not recommend buying this device and I'm going to be returning mine. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.